somebody wouldn't have just picked up a horse leg and be able to play like that. Yeah. Like if I'd just blown through a horse's leg and I heard that noise, I'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> I knew I wanted to make a record uh, with a skeleton and I, so I just tried to find the biggest skeleton I could find which on eBay at the time was a horse uh, and I bought it and then it, it sat in the corner of my studio in boxes for a good three or four weeks whilst I panicked and thought what on earth have I done I don't even have space to lay it out I don't know how to assemble it um, and then so I just started beginning so I was like well I, I knew it would be some sort of percussion instrument but I was like okay well the the, let's make some flutes out of its bones uh, and I had somebody called Henry Dagg who lives up in Faversham he's a slightly older um, gentleman and an extraordinary musical instrument maker um, and he made these um, four flute bones from its legs for me and then I just sort of began really so in a way uh, the idea of doing the beginnings of music was an accident actually and then I was like oh wait a minute I'm right at the beginnings of the earliest music so quite quickly I was like okay well if I go f if I then move from bone flutes to real flutes then from real flutes to sampled flutes and then to electronics and things then I'm sort of telling a history of music and the musical imagination and technology and things like that um so what you what you're hearing there at the beginning is um, four flutes played by um, the London Contemporary Orchestra and I gave them to them and I just sort of said imagine you're the very first people to play these these instruments um, what and just go you know and of course they'd never played a horse's leg before <laughs> and they're pretty big they're sizable they're really twisted um, so you have to hold them in a strange way and they've got a very odd mouthpiece called a fipple flute so they're quite cumbersome weird kind of things and actually uh, a lot of the record really is about trying to understand music by doing it so so much of the music really is about sort of discovery trying to work out how to how they would have done it how it would have felt like we don't know what happened 30 45 thousand years ago when music was first being made so we're we're trying to work it out by doing it rather than by thinking about it yeah and in my head before i started the project i sort of thought well when the first music would have been Da, 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 da. someone would have picked up and played a melody but of course that's very unlikely to have happened and in a way that's what we discovered was the flautists all sort of went like this like a trill and you realised actually for the very earliest people to pick up a leg of a horse and blow through it and to hear sound and hear melodic sound or a pure tone would have felt very strange I should imagine quite alarming and felt immediately like you're you've found the soul of the horse or the you're connected to the universe or the ancestors or something really strange I think you would have felt and that's that's really how how the record begins um, we had a recording with the London Contemporary Orchestra and I went there with no music which for a classical setup is quite it's not usually done they're not normally improvisers in this way and I turned the lights down and I was just really honest with them and I just bought a skeleton I was like okay I want you to try and find a connection between these bones and your instruments because we wouldn't really have probably have music in the same way if it wasn't for animals so you know drums um and still to this day some drums are made with the skins of animals and um, we still use horse hair um for bows for violins and cellos um you know ivory was on piano keys um uh, gut strings were were used um, and in fact we made Henry made me a lyre which is like a sort of early harp out of the pelvis using sheep gut strings that you can still buy today so you really you really have these sort of this very direct and slightly uncomfortable relationship with animals and matter and and all the sort of the blood and guts of it in a way and the sacrifices needed for us to make music so i took those there and um i had them make i had them take a, a rib and then and then sort of tie horse hair around it and add rosin which is the sort of thing that violins use to get a bit of friction onto the onto the bow and then start to try and play their instruments and so you, that's what you hear um that's what you hear on track two you start to hear them like sort of crudely used there yeah and what's really great was working with the musicians was that they just because it was complicated and these bows were very crude 
they couldn't play very much. They just sort of played an open string. And actually, um, so that just evolved. And, that, and what happened was that at the end of that piece, um, if I fade it up, move it forward, we just have a sort of, we just have a kind of, it's the introduction of harmony. It's just a single triad, it's just a single chord. And, it, and that becomes, for me, that just becomes representative of a step into harmony. And it's, that, it's the sort of the first chord in a way. And this just evolved naturally out of working the musicians because you realize they can't play very much. And, and so it's very complicated for them to, to play. So they play this thing very simple, but actually out of this sort of weird, scrapey, scratchy thing, you get a sort of really beautiful harmonic mm. moment um, emerge. And then I had Shabaka, I'd, I'd worked with Shabaka playing the flute and you think, well, actually, once you've got harmony, then melody can start to occur. And this is Shabaka trying to work out how, what kind of melody you could play. So on this, this is him now. This is him, yeah. So you're sort of starting to get a kind of um, competence or technique or ability, you know, now in a different part. You can't just start the record. I thought I was going to start the record a bit like this, but actually you can't. You know, you need to sort of work up to it. You know, that somebody wouldn't have just picked up a horse leg and be able to play like that. Yeah. Like if I'd just blown through a horse's leg and I heard that noise, I'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> Where, what am I doing? Am I, am I in touch with something extraordinary? You know, it'd take years and years of trying to work out what it would have felt like a lot of hours of practice or the kind of time that Shabak has put into working with different types of flutes and things like that. Yeah. And then the sort of the last detail that I, that for me really was really sort of moving and, um, brilliant aspect of making this was um i was like well if i'm doing the origins of music the acoustic would have been important as well of how you'd have heard it so i was so i um so i went to northern spain i took the train down to northern spain and recorded in um paleolithic caves in front of the world's oldest horse drawings or some of the world's oldest horse drawings and um I and what did you record there i mean was it just a field recording or, or were you recording music there well i wanted to record the flutes i wanted to take the flutes and record there and uh, i also sort of recorded outside and various bits but i didn't have formal permission to do it so i i couldn't do much recording there and then when i came back i hooked up with um dr rupert till at the university of huddersfield and he had been into these caves and he'd mapped them properly. It's called impulse response uh, or convolution reverb, where you send a signal into a sound signal into the into the room, and it measures the computer measures how the room responds. So, um, and I took the impulse responses that he did and applied that over my flute. So what you're hearing there is what those flutes, my flutes, would have sounded like played in exactly those caves, in exactly in front of those horse drawings. And the thing that you discover, and maybe I'll play it in just a minute, is that different parts of the cave have very, very different resonances. Um, so I got a, a horse skin drum, which is just over there, um, and I recorded it in my studio here, and then I played it through one of these, through these different locations, and then one of them had this huge bass resonance, um, which... So that's just my horse skin drum, but through a particular part. Right. So in played in this room. In this played studio, in this room, but then sent through these impulse responses. responses. Yes, yeah, so that's sort of a computer mapping of what yeah. of of a particular horse drawing in a particular cave um, in northern Spain, and the sort of base that you get off it is really extraordinary, and um, and this was something that for me started to be something that was really started the whole thing to really come alive then which is like you're starting to hear real um you're starting to hear real sounds in the way that they would have been heard at the time (laughs) 